Bullet velocity controls the time between when you take a shot and the impact. This varies greatly between weapons. Some guns make this delay negligible, like the Lebel with Spitzer ammo. Others are a little slower. This is why you can't hit a moving target. If hunters always stood still, this wouldn't be an issue. But that's not the case. If you've ever missed a shot because of a moving target, you're in the right spot. Get ready to master bullet velocity. By the end of this video, you'll be leading your shots, dodging bullets, and making better weapon choices for the deadliest loadouts. What is bullet velocity, and why does it matter? A weapon's velocity controls how fast a bullet moves from you to your target. The further away the target is, the longer it takes the bullet to get there. If the target moves before the bullet arrives, then you'll miss. The trick is to lead the target to get the shot. The hard part is, every gun has a different velocity from 60 meters per second on the bomb lance, and the highest velocity in the game at 850 on the label with Spitzer ammo. I put together a comprehensive velocity infographic along with a Google Sheet containing my research. Use this spreadsheet to search and sort all guns with the exception of shotguns by velocity, variation, ammo type, and more. Both the infographic and the spreadsheet can be found in my Discord. If you plan on hitting your shots, you must consider how fast and what direction your target is moving, how far away they are from you, and how fast your bullet travels. Then, instead of firing at your target, fire where they will be when the bullet gets to them. This is leading your target. Guns with slower bullet velocity require you to lead your targets more. This makes it more difficult since not only do you have to shoot sooner ahead of time, but your opponent also has more time to change their movement direction. Distances in hunt approximate real world values. So when talking about these values, you can approximate them to a hunter's height. I calculated a hunter's move speed. Crouching came in at about one and a quarter meters per second, walking at three, and running around five. Having a general idea of what this distance looks like can help you line up your shots. For example, if you're using a spark silencer and shooting at a hunter running at 100 meters away, you'll need to aim about 1.7 meters ahead of them. Now, how do you tell how far away someone is? Credit to Kormf for this brilliant solution, the ping marker. It's always the same size on your screen, so you can use that relative to a hunter's height to determine the distance. Just be careful, because if you're aiming down iron sights or in a scope, then your screen zooms in, which changes the ratio of the ping marker to the hunter. If you're 25 meters away and you ping at their feet, it lines up with their hips. And if you're zoomed in with iron sights, the marker is as high as their knees. At 50 meters, it lines up with their head normally, or their hips if you're aiming down iron sights. At 100 meters with iron sights, the marker is the same as the height of their head. The further the distance gets, the more difficult this is to gauge. So go ahead and experiment to get the feel of it. To help you better understand the interaction between distance, move speed, and bullet velocity, check out what these lead times look like. Here are several ranges shown on screen for weapons at various velocities. At 150, 200, 300, 400, 530, 600, 740, and finally, the highest velocity in the game at 850, the Lebel with Spitzer ammo. If you want to get granular, you can figure out how many meters a bullet travels each frame. Take the bullet velocity and divide it by your frame rate. If you're playing at 60 frames per second and shooting the Spark Silencer at a 300 meter velocity, then divide 300 by 60 and find out that the bullet travels 5 meters per frame. Were you aware that bullet velocity can contribute to trades? Well, your ping is a bigger impact in this, velocity is still a factor. As long as your opponent shoots before your bullet impacts them, they can trade. For example, let's say you're using a spark silencer ammo at 300 meter velocity. You are 100 meters from your target. If you shoot first, they have one third of a second or 20 frames at 60 frames per second to shoot back and get the trade. If on the other hand, you were using a label with spitzer ammo, they would only have seven frames to return fire. The higher your velocity, the bigger your advantage. In some games, guns have what's called bullet drop, where you have to adjust your aim vertically for how much the bullet drops while it travels. Most guns in Hunt don't have this. The exceptions are the bomb lance, crossbows, hand crossbows, hunting bows, and of course, any throwables. If you're using these, be sure to factor drop into your aiming. Interestingly enough, the quad derringer actually has a slower velocity than the crossbow or hunting bow, but still it has no bullet drop. Quiz time! 
Which of these has the fastest bullet velocity? The Vetterly with regular medium ammo, the Winfield Centennial with medium FMJ ammo, or the Martini Henry with standard long ammo? Believe it or not, the Centennial with FMJ is faster than both the Vetterly with its regular ammo and the Martini Henry with its long ammo. On top of that, both the Centennial and the Vetterly's standard ammo is faster than the Martini Henry's long ammo. If you're like me, that probably raises some questions in your head. Isn't FMJ supposed to be slow? And shouldn't long ammo be faster than medium ammo? When I started my research, I thought those were true too. This quirk between these three guns inspired me to dive into this topic. So let's address some velocity quirks. First, is ammo velocity connected to ammo type? Yes, kind of. Well, in general. Medium ammo is faster than compact ammo, and long ammo is usually faster than medium ammo. This is a general rule, but it's not universally true. Each ammo type spans a spectrum, especially if you include outliers. Check out my infographic if you want a visualization on this. The biggest outliers are the Centennial, Martini Henry, silencers, and high-velocity ammo. For some reason, the Centennial's standard ammo has a bullet velocity of 600, which is in line with most standard long ammos. It now fills a niche of being the highest speed medium ammo. The Vetterly can technically match it, but only when equipped with high velocity ammo. These two guns show us how much the design team values velocity. The Vetterly is $50 cheaper than the Centennial, but it is equal or better in every single area except for ammo capacity and velocity. To match the Centennial's velocity, you have to increase the base price by over 50% with high velocity ammo for 60 hunt dollars. Don't underestimate velocity. If you're not paying attention to it, it's easy to miss, literally. The Martini Henry has a real world inspiration of the same name. That real world gun's muzzle velocity is the same as Hunt's at 400 meters. So its velocity is clearly an effort to being true to its inspiration. But this allows the Martini Henry to hold a unique place in Hunt's arsenal of being a slow, low cost, long ammo rifle. Special ammo also lets guns break the velocity trends. The main ones to pay attention to are FMJ, high velocity, and Spitzer ammo. FMJ and explosive ammo reduce bullet velocity by anywhere from 30 to 163 meters. So when using these, make sure to lead your shots a little bit more. In the inverse, high velocity ammo gives a significant increase to bullet velocity. In most cases, bringing it near standard long ammo in the 500 to 610 range. Personally, high velocity ammo's increased accuracy is almost always worth the price on rifles. This gives you the velocity of a long ammo rifle while keeping the fire rate of a compact or medium ammo rifle. It's great if you want to practice long ammo speeds but don't have deep pockets. Take a Winfield or a Vetterly with a marksman scope and high velocity ammo and you basically have a discount label marksman. Just remember that high velocity doesn't extend the effective range, so longer shots may not have the impact you're hoping for. Spitzer ammo is the high velocity for long ammo rifles. It boasts a significant boost of velocity of around an additional 200. It has more penetration power, meaning you can go through more wood or sheets of metal. If you want more information on that, go check out Korn's analysis on penetration. The downside to Spitzer is that it puts the rifle's damage below the 125 mark. That means you won't be one-shotting hunters missing a small bar by hitting them in the chest. Headshots are now a lot more important. Getting those headshots will be a lot easier. Other ammo types don't have a significant impact on velocity. Incendiary and poison usually have no effect. Dum Dum is typically only a slight negative reduction. In most cases, other than the nitro or the drilling, you won't be noticing it. The largest range of velocities in a single weapon is the Winfield 1873. The high velocity ammo clocks in at 600, and the FMJ comes in at almost half that at 330. That's a difference of 270 meters per second. So yes, long ammo is usually faster, but there are plenty of guns that can break that trend. Which silencer is the fastest with base ammo? If you guessed the shorty, you'd be right. This one is a strange outlier. Yes, the Centennial's base form has a fantastic velocity, but you'd expect a two-slot silent weapon to get a bigger punishment than that. At 390 meters per second, the Shorty Silencer is the fastest silenced weapon. If you're including special ammo in the options, the fastest silenced weapon is the Winfield Silencer. It jumps to the top at 450 meters per second.
What can knowing about bullet velocity help you in a defensive fashion? Well, bushwookies with silencers and scopes are always lurking just out of sight. Your survival hinges on taking advantage of the moment between the trigger pull and the impact. This rests on one key concept, always keep moving. When you're between compounds, in a shootout, getting clues, or reviving a buddy, the goal is to move erratically so that by the time the bullet gets to you, you've moved down of the way. While exploring, make sure you're never running in straight lines, but move back and forth and left and right unpredictably. These erratic movements make it so the person aiming you down needs to guess your next move. If they can't line it up, they may even pass on taking the shot entirely. In a shootout, the same principle applies. The more you move, the harder you are to hit. Be careful not to only strafe left and right. If someone is flanking you, you won't be making yourself harder to hit to them. So be sure to mix it up by occasionally moving forward and backwards and throwing the occasional crouch in there as well. When you're collecting a clue or reviving a downed teammate, you'll want to wiggle your head back and forth. This makes it so that your head swivels back and forth and is harder for a bullet to find. These movement tips will save you more often than you think. The best thing you can do with bullet velocity is make it irrelevant. To make that happen, check out this deep dive on distracting opponents with decoys.